As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. We have to do our, our gaming chair story. Um, for those of you who, I don't know, who, who don't know, maybe you're new to the live stream, this live stream, in addition to being the hardest hitting sort of business commentary in and around gaming and esports, we are also uh, by far the most well-respected gaming chair reviewers on the planet. And, um, and Razor this time is the one with a new chair, believe it or not. So we talked about Razor Another last one. week. And, and this, this I, I don't know how you guys are going to react to this. And the headline here is, the Hello Kitty gaming chair was bound to happen. <laughs> um, and the sub headline says, hey, if she sells toilet paper, why not gaming gear? Uh, it's Razor per, like with Hello Kitty and friends coming soon. They're teaming up with Sanrio, who owns the Hello Kitty like name and likeness, for a whole bunch of Hello Kitty and friends branded gaming gear. It includes a gaming chair and headphones. Uh, it's obviously pink like this, as you can see. It says for gamers by gamers with Hello Kitty on the back. Um, I mean, not much else to this other than the Hello Kitty <laughs> tie-in here, guys. Uh, seems to be a, a pretty run-of-the-mill Razer gaming chair otherwise. Uh, Lindsay, do you love this? Do you hate this? Okay, well, I do love it because I love Hello Kitty. But <laughs> I would love to... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Where does um, it rank with the tiny chair? The tiny chair is like the benchmark. <laughs> yeah, the tiny chair is still number one. I'm going to get... I'm working on getting a picture of my nephews actually sitting in their collection of tiny chairs by the way, but <laughs> trying to make a two month old, eight month old sit still for a picture turns out to be harder than advertised. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I actually wanted to tie this back into the discussion we had earlier about moving more into lifestyle brand stuff, because this yeah. is such a good way of hardware brands moving into lifestyle while still maintaining high quality of hardware and offerings, I think. Um, and the reason why that excites me is because when you have a, a brand, I suppose, that starts off as a lifestyle brand, you don't automatically think, oh, high quality hardware with their branding on it. You do think sweatshirts. Whereas when you start off with a, a great hardware brand and moved into lifestyle, you get, oh my gosh, a super cool and really well, really nice Hello Kitty chair. That's going to be of interest to a lot of people who are into content and branding. So I think that, um, I mean, everything I've seen Razor do in sort of this lifestyle brand area, I've pretty much been excited about even the silly things like the mobile phone gaming glove and the gum. I, I think that they've done like good little activations where it's you don't have to produce millions of a product. It doesn't have to sell well, but it's going to make news and it's going to be fun. And some people are going to really enjoy it. Uh, and I think they've been really smart about this so far. And I think the, the Hello Kitty gaming chair is just an evolution of that. Yeah. No way it doesn't okay. sell out. No way it doesn't yeah. sell out. Oh, I agree. Sure sells I think, out. But yeah. the, the gum and the glove, I wasn't sure about. <laughs> I, I would argue Hello Kitty, I, I, I mean, I, maybe this is not a hot take, has a bigger fan base than like the Lamborghini one, potentially, no? Like, is, does, is this a bigger sort of uh, addressable market for the Hello Kitty chair than the Lamborghini yeah. chair? Well, I mean, Hello Kitty just has such strong lifestyle branding as it is. Like I own Hello Kitty pajamas. I had a Hello Kitty lunchbox. Like there was a billion yep. things I had growing up that were related to Hello Kitty. I can see young people wanting this. I can see older people wanting this because they grew up with Hello Kitty. Like there's just such a more accessibility in this brand than there is Lamborghini. I, I mean, is it unfair? Like uh, the more, the more, like it used to be that a lot of these tie-ins were gaming related. Right, like a lot of the tie-in was like a a a chair that was you know CS:GO themed, or a chair that was like 
you know, had a certain colorway from a game or something like that. Like more and more we're seeing the way brands activate is through gaming chair licensing, it seems. Um, is it just because there's all these niche markets for all these, you know, these, these brands, like these, these partners, these licensing partners? Um, I, I think Hello Kitty also just appeals to a female market too, which seems mm -hmm. under, definitely underserved, even in, in gaming chairs, right? Not, not to mention in the broader market as a whole, but just in gaming chairs. Pretty much Razer's the only one who's done stuff, right? They did the they do the cat ear headphones, they do like they do the pink uh you know, wireless gaming mice, the they have Sid the Viper has pink. those, right? Yeah, so I like the, there's a lot there there there's a lot of like like Razer has some legacy here. Um I I, I like this one, guys. I, I you know, I, I wouldn't buy it myself, but so uh, I so I, I don't know why you have a, a hard time with a lot of the Fortnite uh, activations because it's kind of the same thing, right? It's just slapping different brands on their digital products in here, whether it's Lambo, Hello Kitty, whatever it is. It's it's just a clever pairing of two worlds and and you know offering that as a, as a consumer good. So I, I just love it because Razor's already done this successfully with Bathing Ape, which is a very well known Japanese streetwear brand everything on that that wasn't just a chair by the way there were hoodies there was a headset all of it sold out instantly uh that razor mask you know that they did that's not a co-branded activation but i'm just saying they they just seem to know um really well what their fans want and i, I can't remember the last razor drop of something unique that wasn't sold out even those masks are they've restocked seven times and they keep selling out so i just i would bet my money on on most any razor activation that they did and, and i love this chair too for all the reasons uh lindsay expressed i just says want well, sorry go ahead Jeff. i just want there to be a bulldog chair why can't there be a bulldog chair <laughs> there's there, every other kind of chair there no could be chair. right there, there must be there yeah isn't isn't georgetown the bulldogs i'm sure georgetown has has a, they're actually has like La Jolla, merch. which I don't know the difference. Is it La Jolla? Okay, sorry. La Jolla, but uh, but their little mascot is a very cute little bulldog. But I guess Jimmy, do you know like is the same is La Jolla the same thing as a bulldog? I, 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 we'll we'll I, have to I, figure I, that I out. Off we'll, the the yeah. we'll take that to the bulldog <laughs> chat. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, the Yale bulldog. Lots of bulldogs. Trent says the fears that Blizzard strikes. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, the, wow, this is actually going to sell like hotcakes. I think the next offering will be Murakami. Murakami is everywhere. Like literally everywhere. We the, we did a, a story today uh, on Meta Business that talked. Well, we didn't talk about Murakami specifically, but that mentioned him. Uh, and uh, I feel like Murakami has decided that gaming is there is going to be their you know their beachfront here. Um, Chris says Mad Cat Sanrio fighting stick was an instant sellout almost a de decade ago. Smart play for Razor. Chris, did they actually do a Hello Kitty fighting stick? Because um, I don't. I don't remember. Uh, Trent says, Hello Kitty greater than Lambo. The math checks out to me. 